Look, coffee grinders are expensive. And the worst part, those cheap grinders make your coffee taste uh, a little sad, like sadness in a cup. But what if there was a way to improve that cheap grinder? What if the myths around sifting fines is true? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a set of experiments I did where I take cheap grinders against expensive grinders and I sift out fines to see if there is any merit to this hypothesis that just getting rid of fines can improve your cup quality drastically. Now, steadily over the past 20 or so years, there has been a growing hyperfixation on grinders. And it's at a peak right now, like never before seen, where people are analyzing everything that's coming out of their grinder and trying to speculate as to what's causing certain sensory aspects. One of the greatest attributes to taste that has been given amongst home enthusiasts and baristas alike has been this idea of a bimodal distribution. This refers to the graphing of the output of a grinder where you're looking at the particle size. So let's imagine X axis would be the size of the particles when you're looking at diameter. So you would have like zero microns all the way up to a thousand microns. And then the Y axis would essentially be the volume of what particles make up the dose that you're analyzing. And so this bimodal idea is there's a peak where the fines have a lot of volume, and there's a second peak where your peak particle or nominal particle lives. The smaller mode, which actually has a higher number of grounds, but a smaller volume of grounds, would be that fines hump. Fine particles are little shards of coffee that will inevitably happen when you are crushing coffee beans that are below your intended nominal peak and so that makes up a hefty amount of what is actually in your dose. The idea is if we have these graphs for these grinders, we can have a good understanding of what the sensory profile will be. But in reality, it's not as clean cut as that. There is a lot more going on with particle size distribution with the particles that come out of a grinder than simply understanding the amount of fines and the amount inside of that nominal peak. Oh, that's awkward with my back turned around, but it's because I wanted to have a little surprise situation where I have my ad read. Today's video is brought to you by Stand Art Magazine. They're no stranger here. I do ads with them a lot because guess what? I love Stand Art Mags. It's something that's part of my daily routine. I like to sit, have my cup of joe, and I sift through these wonderful articles that can go from looking at coffee plants and tea leaves to talking about the history of home baristas. Oh, did I write that article? Yes, I did. And you can, of course, get the first journal free along with a free sample of coffee if you pay nine US dollars shipping with my code www.standartmag.com slash Lance. But even more exciting is they are now releasing an anniversary book that is a compilation of wonderful articles they've had over the years in their archives with additional annotations from the original authors themselves. This will be a robust over 350 page book that is hardback and of course beautifully put together as is the MO of Standart. With this code, LANCE10, you'll be able to check out with a $10 discount. And I highly recommend you do, because when this bad boy is shipped, it's going to be incredible. I am greedily waiting for mine, because guess who has an article featured in there? <laughs> yes, it's me, and I'm really excited about it. Very humbled, but also really stoked. Lancey Pansy's got your back. All right, that's about it. Let's get back to sifting grinders. <laughs> I'll, I'll grind a little bit of beans in the Porlex so you can, is this yes. filming still? I'm gonna walk you through what I did and what the intention of it is, and we'll do a little bit here on screen, uh, which is gonna be reflective of the 20 or so rounds that I did off screen with my friend Hui. We did 10 hours of testing with pour overs and cheap and more expensive grinders, and I'll present to you those results. My inspiration for this is, of course, furthering the accessibility of coffee. And my hope was, even though I was very skeptical of it, that if we were to sift out fines out of something like this Porlex grinder, we would be able to match a more unimodal style grinder, or we'd be able to match uh, uh, something that is, you know, maybe a bit more expensive. Maybe you want to create some pour overs and you think sifting fines might be the way to get a shortcut to glory. I took this Porlex grinder, which is, for me, one of the worst grinders 
for my palette. That doesn't mean it's bad for you if you have one, that's great. But objectively, when we're looking at these um, fines production, this produces more fines than most any grinder that I have. And then I took the Pietro with Pro Brew Burrs. It's something that I've done lots of particle size data on, and it's the, at least with my testing, it's the most unimodal uh, hand grinder on the market. And because I have multiple versions of these in different burr sets, I have more tests coming on with this later in this video. This is known to have a really nice, really high clarity profile, whereas this one is pretty muddy, pretty gritty, and is just kind of not ideal for especially specialty coffee or lightly roasted coffees. Took these two grinders and I pit them against each other, where I first brewed them both completely untouched, then I would sift one and not the other, and I would sift the other and not the first, and I would do both of them sifted even when I did unsifted tests, I would shake the grounds in the same way I had to shake to sieve. That way everything had the same exposure to motion, to shaking in case something is going on during shaking as hypothesized in previous videos. And the idea was to do taste tests, blind taste tests, one-on-one -on -one with my tasting partner, Hui, and we measured the extraction, we measured the amount of fines that came out during sifting in order to ensure that we had everything that was recordable recorded as data. And all of that, of course, is down below for your own viewing. Then I took a second Pietro, boom, and I put in the multi-purpose burrs in here, which is more so geared towards espresso while also being able to do filter quite well. And my idea was, let's make a smaller chasm between the qualities. Let's take the same chassis, the same grinder, same everything, and just have a slightly different burr geometry in the two and see if there is that much of a difference with fines versus no fines. And if we can match the quality of this grinder, the Pro Brew burrs, with the multi-purpose burrs, because this has a much more unimodal distribution than something like the Porlex. I took a simple recipe that I was able to repeat easily, and I did two brews at a time every time. Dr. Sama was telling me that statistically, it's more important to do one V1. So that's what we did, and I have all the results as well. The way we did this was using 15 grams of coffee to 240 grams of water. I would do a 45 gram bloom, then I did a pour up to 160 grams, then a pour up to 240 grams. And the total brew time obviously varied between the burr sets and whatnot. I started by matching the nominal peak, and the reason I did this as opposed to matching extraction yield or TDS is because I wanted to taste them, but I wanted to see if after sifting out all those fines, we could get similar numbers with the same particle peak. For a 15 gram dose, I did 18 in each for certain grind settings. And then as the fines production got higher and higher on the Porlex, I would have to increase the dose that went in in order to get 15 grams out. We use 93 degree water, three different coffees, two from a roaster up in Netherlands called Dialect, run by Dr. Marc Alchemery. I used a washed Colombian, and I used a high intervention processed Diego Bermudez coffee. I also used a Tim Wendelboe washed Kenya in order to kind of hit all areas of taste from wash to a more funky coffee. I thought this was appropriate to get a full understanding of how this was going to work. Porlex unsifted, Porlex sifted. Pietro unsifted, Pietro sifted. This in fact is just representative of the testing I've already done off screen. Again, the data's below. I'm not basing my conclusions on this one thing. Are you ready, Ugo? No. Can you take me higher to a place where blind men see? Can you take me higher? You have the warning, Miss Phonia Trigger. Let's go. To a place I'll describe as I taste. where blind men see. Okay. Whoop. Acidity. It's very singular, I should say. Very silky texture. It's balanced. It's got a really nice acidity. Very clear. Very bitter, very, very bitter. It's just really naughty. That's definitely the Porlex. Uh, so this one was definitely the best one. It's gotta be Pietro, this one. The Pietro um, sifted because it's really hollow. It's got that weird acidity that's just singular. And this has just gotta be sifted Porlex. So Pietro, it's gotta be three, so it's gotta be right beside number four. So that's gotta be number two. And I guess that leaves this for number one which had nothing on it, so that's it. If you're trying to figure out your particle distribution, you should not use a crew sifter or something. That's not gonna tell you much at all. The more you sift something, the more you're gonna get bigger particles through smaller holes because particles are not spherical. 
They are very jagged and funky looking little particles that can like, you know, do like a little hopscotch type of design. And if it's long and thin, it can go through a smaller sieve size with, when, if you shake it enough. Particle shape is actually very important and the different burrs and the, and the sharpness of them, the way that they're cutting, all completely change the way those particle shapes come out. My hypothesis is with this Porlex, because of the way that it is breaking those beans up, has nothing to do with cutting really at all. You have these massive gaps where beans can fill in aggressively and quickly, so they're immediately being smushed. Whereas here we have much sharper things that could actually cut your finger, and they have much more intense edges as they're feeding in much more slowly which gives more of that cracking and gives more of the cutting as opposed to mushing. The particle distribution itself is very important. The difference in their curves is quite massive. The Pietro is something like this, very unimodal, whereas the Porlex is something like this, where the peak is much shorter because there's less volume at that peak. And this is going to give you much more of the over-extracting with the smaller particles and much bigger boulders that are gonna under-extract, giving you a really imbalanced cup that can consistently give you an accurate aftertaste, can be really bitter, uh, and it just can be uh, very gritty, which was a very common thing I noticed in the Porlex cups, unless I sifted out the fines. That being said, I thought the cup was better with the Porlex when the fines were sifted. Now you may be saying, cool Lance, you took literally the worst grinder you could get and one of the best hand grinders on the market and you showed that they can't be equal. Cool, that does nothing for me. I took these two and went side by side. This one has that multi-purpose burr inside, which they created using the same burr creation methodology that I kind of instilled with the Pro Brews. Very nice burrs, they do espresso great, and they're actually pretty good at filter. They give you a more kind of juicy, but maybe at the expense of maybe a little bitterness. Uh, it's not as high clarity, but they have a really nice texture about it. Now in this test, when they were both unsifted, the Pro Brew, it was unanimous every time we did it. But when we sifted the multi-purpose and did not sift the Pro Brew, it was much closer. That being said, the Pro Brew still came out on top because it had a much better body and it was a lot less hollow. Whenever you sift out those fines, the cup goes hollow. The more unimodal the grinder, the more necessary the fines become. The less unimodal, the less necessary they become. And that makes a lot of sense. If again, we look back at that Porlex and we assume what the particle size distribution is gonna roughly look at the curve, when you take the fines out of the equation, you still have a really wide hump for its particle peak. This means you still have a lot of those fine particles that are much easier to extract. But when you have a really unimodal grinder, there's a big gap of grounds between the fines and the particle peak that don't really have much representation. So you're really relying on those fines to produce a lot of the goodness in your cup. It's really like fines are the seasoning for a good dish. You have too much and it can be overwhelming, but if you do just the right amount, it can bring a depth, a balance, a sweetness that you otherwise would not be able to get. The multi-purpose burrs, when it was sifted, we had a much cleaner cup, but it did still have that bit of hollowness that even that, that something like the Pietro would have. That hollowness was consistent across the board. Now it did improve, again, the Porlex at certain grind sizes, but not at all grind sizes. And I think that's largely because when you get to coarser grind, grind sizes, there are less fines being produced anyway. When you have less fines, you don't want to like take them all out. I took those fines that I'd been sifting out all day, and I have some extra here because we sifted out so many, but I had it in a jar, and I took the fines, and I plopped them in a cup. I took boiling water, tossed it in with the fines, and I let it sit over 10 minutes. I took measurements with pipettes at 30 seconds, at a minute, at a minute 30, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, and 10 minutes, and I measured the TDS of all of them after filtering them because there were grounds in the pipettes, obviously almost identical TDS readings throughout the entire 10 minutes. There was like two times there were kind of anomalous readings, but at the four minute mark and the 10 minute mark, it matched the, the 30 second mark and the one minute mark, which means everything else was a little bit of noise because we had the same concentration throughout. If it was increasing in extraction, you would expect an increase of concentration. If you have this idea of adding them at the end of the brew, just have a little bit of it, you're not actually gonna abstain from the bitterness. Fines extract incredibly quickly and they give off the bitterness almost immediately. 
if you've been watching my channel for a while or following what I've done in my career, I did do a Brewers Cup championship a few years ago in it. I removed fines halfway through the brew and I said that I was able to remove the fines to abstain from excessive bitterness coming from them. In reality, the reason those cups were tasting better with sifting the fines out mid-brew is because we were taking out some of the blockages of the water flow through the bed and we were able to get a more even flow with the final pour, which gave a bit tastier extraction without having those fines blockading the world. I did a normal cupping bowl. I took the same amount of coffee of just normally ground coffees for a cupping, and I did the same test, and sure enough, it consistently went up, even though the climb was much slower from four to 10 than it was from, say, 30 seconds to one minute. Does sifting fines help you improve your cup of coffee? Well, in my testing, not really. Maybe if you have a really cheap grinder, sifting out some of them can be helpful, but it's not a magic bullet that's going to completely transform your grinder, I'm sad to say. Lots of variables that play into the eventual sensory profile of a cup. So just sifting out fines is not enough, but if you have a cheaper grinder or if you have a grinder that's espresso focused, you could try sifting out some of them and it will likely improve your pour over coffees. I just would not recommend sifting as much as you can because again, that will lead to more hollow cups that can lead to a, 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 an imbalanced cup and cups that in the end are very, very unsatisfying. I have found that necessarily fines increase the extraction of everything, which seems logical, but there's proof in the data below. Every time we took out fines, the extraction dipped. I would even go finer when I was sifting things in order to have a more fair comparison at extraction yield during some of the trials. Have you tried this and do you have similar results or do you want to try this and see if it works for you? Because this is again, just based off of my palate and Hui's palate and what we preferred. And the fact that I was able to guess the grinder every single trial I thought meant, you know, meant something, but again, it's based completely off my own taste preferences. And if you do wanna try it, come back, comment on the video, let us know how your trial went. There are loads of dose cups online you can buy even on AliExpress that have a little built-in sifter in it, 200 micron sieve, that's what this one is, and just sift out below that amount. Get it out, try it. You can add a little bit in and see if there's an amount that you really enjoy. So if you're making s'mores or if you're grilling meats or if you're charring vegetables, that little bit of char does bring a bitterness, but is an enjoyable one. And I think it is a necessary byproduct of fines and what they're actually giving, which is a more balanced acidity. It brings everything together in the cup and it makes things taste better. Thank you for helping the channel by subscribing and liking the video and just following along and engaging in this community. And uh, if there's anything else you wanna see with regards to fines and fines manipulation, please let me know. If there's any revelation that you had while watching this, let me know below because this data, I put it out there because I'm sure there are more conclusions we can draw, though tentatively, uh, and that will always point me in the direction of more data acquisition. So let me know, let's have a chat, check out my Patreon below, do all that cool stuff. Thank you so much, so much, so much. And I think that's it. So it's time to let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. Hugo hates me and he's gonna cry. That, that's it for real. Okay, I hope that you brought something that tasty song. today. And cheers. <laughs> I want you to keep all that in there. I love that song. You have to keep it in there. I want it in there.